Use the force. Hey everybody, well this is Betty's engine, and a few people asked to say they wanted to see it being taken apart. Well, it took so long to take it apart, what I've done is taken it apart, but to put it back together again so I can sort of deconstruct it, and I'm going to try and explain to you how a motorcycle engine works and how the clutch works. Now, I'm not a mechanic, these are things that I've picked up along the way and just learnt from reading shit, so if I go wrong, I'm sorry, this is definitely not something to learn by, other than just sort of general if you didn't know. So obviously it's a Pulse Adrenaline 125cc engine, which is also the Suzuki GN engine, I believe. It's a copy of. They just basically changed this. Um, and we'll get back to that anyway. Get back on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the head apart and work my way down and explain to you how each section works. Now obviously if you know all this stuff, then don't bother watching the video. But if you don't know, then you might learn something. Underneath the first cover... This is the rocker arms, and I'll explain what he's doing in a minute, you've got the cam, this is the cam chain. Now this chain here should be over the top of this, where I've taken it apart and I can't quite get the piston back in, I can't get it back over. So, you know, just imagine this is over the top of here. Um, and you've got the valves. So what happens is, because there's sort of two sides to an engine, um, if you can imagine, we'll start with the, the piston going up and down. Now the piston going up and down obviously is done by fuel and air mix. Now, running off the piston crank is the cam chain, the bottom end of it. So, if this runs to the top, and by these turning at the same time, they can time when the valves are pressed to release um, the, you know, the fuel and air mix and to let the exhaust down. And the way that works, obviously, is as this turns with the cam chain, as that's going round, it turns the cam. Okay, so as the cam's turning like this, you see, you've got a lump, then a lump. Now, that corresponds to these, which are the rocker arms. So, and these get pushed up and down by these cams. Now, by these being pushed down, makes the valve push down, which releases either the fuel in or allows the exhaust to come out. Um, and that's then returned by the spring of the valve. Now, on these engines, it's quite handy. So this is from the top of the engine. Is that these, as you can see, you can get to the valve, so you can adjust the valve timing um, without taking the engine apart, which I believe on some engines is not something you can do, and it's very tricky, but that's one very handy thing about them. Um, so that's the top section, so we've explained, you know, can goes around, presses the rocker arms, it pressures on the valves, and that's what lets the fuel go in, and then the, uh, the gases, the exhaust bisque to escape, which is run by the chain, so it's helping run each other, you see? And one thing I'm going to note, is that the cam chain's falling in there, now there's normally a guide in here for the cam chain, um, like a long plastic thing, where are they? Here they are. There's these. Obviously, the chain rub, rubs against these or is guided by it. And then you adjust the tension with this, which is a cam chain tensioner. Now, this pin can go in and out by undoing this screw. So, if I can undo it, there you go. You see? So, if you can imagine that the chain is looping from top to bottom, if you want to put tension on it, you just press it in the middle a little bit onto the guide. And that, as I say, is what adjusts the tension on that. Now, this isn't something you have to adjust very often. Um, but I did once, so, you know, something's worth knowing about. So the next section down is the valves, as you can see here. This is where the spark plug goes in, it's where it comes out at the top of the valves. Now, one of these will let the oil and petrol mix in, it's oil, sorry, petrol and air mix in, the other one is the one that allows the exhaust out. Now, people will tell you all sorts of stuff about the colouring of this, and what it means, and if it's running rich or lean, or if there's this problem or that problem, um, but I don't know. And I don't really care. Um, so, yeah, that's the next section down. So then, carrying on down, obviously this is the groove that the cam chain's in, we've got the piston down there. Now, I can't get my piston back at, fully into the barrel because the rings have expanded a bit, so I've sort of pressed it together. Oh, come on, you fucker. Ordinarily, you would not use your cam to get the head off. It's not mechanically advised. Come on. That was easy. So, yeah, then the next bit is the head itself, which is basically the cylinder that everything goes on, on in, on. Uh, and mine was in good nick, although there may have been a bit of bleed by, or whatever it's bloody called, because um, the side of the piston, might be a bit dark for you to see, uh, is a little bit scorched, um, and there's some sort of marks to indicate that it might have been going round the piston rings. Maybe they were starting to get a bit warm. But they look good still. I mean, they've sprung right out. Um, there are dents in the top, you've noticed that is to correspond with the valve and the spacing of that can help increase all sorts of... I don't care. So that basically, as you can see, it's the piston going up and down, and that's getting fuelled by the valves which is being run by the cam chain. So you understand that's sort of one side of it, that's keeping the mood to running, keeping the mood to running. Obviously this is the sprocket where the chain attaches, and that's where the 
shifter normally is. <laughs> now as you can see this side, it feels like it's springy. That's because it's been held on by the magnets because you've got the, uh, the pickup here. I don't think that's its technical name. Is it the magneto? Basically this is the coil of wire um, which stays stationary and then there's a magnet inside here in the rotor and by this the magnet going over the copper coil that creates electrical charge and that's why it charges your battery and obviously what runs the bike now i think that might be the rpm pickup i don't know i haven't got a clue and what's falling out here oh um okay this normally lives in here on this uh which if you see corresponds to the starter motor here so ow you got cogs here which are actually inside the engine there's a seal around here that catches onto this gear here which catches onto this gear sorry this gear catches from the motor onto this one which turns this one now when we go inside here so take the rotor off screw it so the rotor comes off, so that's just basically a charging of your battery, like an alternator. Uh, now this is the starter sprocket, <laughs> as well as where it connects to the, um, the main shaft, obviously when the electric motor goes, spins the bitch, and then you get your engine starting. Here is the cam chain, which is like a piece of Betty jewellery. It's like a lovely necklace. By the way, all note, the inside of this engine is very good, apart from one thing, which is that there is some fractures all throughout this side casing. Now, whether that's through the crash or time or a couple of drops that it's had or whatever, I don't know. But I mean, it hasn't really compromised it, but it, it, they are sort of cracks that are there. You know, they're going to get worse. So right now we're down to, this is what they see the cams attached to. So by this, by the piston going up and down, that's what causes this to turn. That's where your, your motion of up and down is converted into round and round because of a cam. Okay. So that explains how one side of an engine works. That's all the power creation. Now what you need to do is take that power and transfer it through the gearbox. Now to get it from the engine to the gearbox, you have a clutch. I'll explain how that works in a minute. But obviously on this side of the engine, we have this, which is the oil uh, filter cover. And you've got a tiny, tiny little oil filter. Oh, isn't it wee? Take the side of the engine off. Now this doesn't look quite like it should. It's a bit stepped out because uh, I've already had this off. But as you can see here, this is the clutch. This middle part and this outer part are actually separate and can move differently. Now, what the uh, the outer one is it? Yes, the outer one is run by the engine, and that's your flywheel on the back. Now, I'm going to pull this off. Now, here's your flywheel. That obviously that spins constantly, and that gives you um, power to sort of it's keeping the engine in motion. Um, it's a way to explain it. And then to transfer it to the gearbox, it gets turned onto this one. Uh, which is done through the clutch. Now, I'll get back to that in just a second. Now, obviously, in here we've got, and I'm going to pull this off here. This is the shifter on the other side, okay? So the shifter's on the other side. There's just a post that goes away through the engine. And then that clicks up here, see? And down. That is the gear changing. So this is the gearbox. Now, I haven't gone into this part of the engine yet, into the actual gearbox. I will do it at some point. So, as we described, we've got all the power and everything being regulated by the cam chain and the valves and all that on one side, if you like. Uh, which is creating power out of here, as you can see, this turning this, everything goes around. That then catches on to the basket, this, uh, the outer part of the basket, the clutch and the flywheel, so that's always spinning. Now, inside of here, this is the, it's, I didn't fully understand how this worked before, but now I do. It's so simple, it's amazing. Now, this is the actual clutch. Under a natural state, this is compressed by these springs, so everything inside is holding together. Now, if I undo them, take them all out, as I explained, inside here, there's the inner and the outer. So, this is the inner, as you can see, this is teethed, and this is the outer. This is just sort of a cover that holds it all on and presses it all together. So what happens is, in its natural state of compression, everything's being held together. Now, if I'll show you very simply one layer. Now, it just is multiple layers of this. Now, if you can see here, these will engage into these, so these keeps these friction plates still. Then inside, you have this one. You see this This one can turn. If I can get it. See this one turns? Now, if you imagine that when you pull your clutch in, you loosen the pressure on these, so this can turn. So your engine's turning over, and none of the power is going to the gearbox, okay? So if I put this back on here to explain this, 
I hope I'm doing a good job of explaining this because, you know, I'm, I'm trying my best. Okay, so this is turning around constantly with the engine, which is obviously always running. So that's always spinning with your flywheel. Then, when you, obviously when the clutch is engaged together, it means that the whole thing has to turn as one because it's all clamped together, which means this centre turns. Now this one is the one that drives into the gearbox and then that eventually will turn your sprocket and your chain. So if you can see, it's two sides of things. You've always got the power running. It's how you get it out through a clutch. I think I've explained how a clutch works quite well. I think. You might understand a bit more now. Or you might understand a bit more than I did. Or I might be talking utter shit. <laughs> oh, and the one thing I haven't mentioned is how the clutch actually works on this. Now, on this engine, when you pull the clutch in, if you can see here, a little bar po pokes out. Now, obviously, when that pokes out, the outer is static with the bike, and this can move outwards, so that's when the pressure is released. So the plates move apart, and it can all slip, and that's when you've got your clutch pulled in, but you're in gear. Then, obviously, when you release your clutch, everything clamps back together again, and that's when you pull away. Okay, ignore everything's changed. I missed this bit, so I'm going to fit it in now and put it in at the right point. Now, the air and fuel mix that we've already mentioned is provided by a carburetor. Now, I'll explain how this works. Now, obviously, this is the head spark is there. Your air box is attached here. So the air is being sucked in through this. Now the suction is caused by the um, piston going downwards. And at that point, it's you know, it, it's part of the cycle. We'll get back to that. Or oh, we've already covered it. I don't know which round it's going to be. <laughs> um, your fuel comes in here into the carburetor. And this is where the throttle cable comes in and out. And it basically regulates how much fuel is mixed into the air, which goes in here, which goes straight into your engine here. And if you'll notice where that comes out is there, which is in the side of the head going down into the tube that the valve runs through this so this is the so this side would be the fuel and air mix coming in this side here flip it over there's the exhaust port itself coming in getting compressed getting sparked then with the timing of the valves which we may have already covered or not um, it then goes out of here into your exhaust and out but obviously this is happening very quickly so basically, yeah, that is how a small engine, motorcycle engine like this works. And it's what Betty's heart looked like. But she's taught me a lot now. Um, because I find that taking something apart and putting it back together again, or just taking it apart and saying exactly how it works, I fully understand how it works at that point. And now, I have no fear in changing the clutch, in changing well, star mode, piece of piss, and if quite anything until I get into that central core, I'm happy with it at this point. So it really has taught me quite a bit. So to recap really quickly, you've got the fuel and the air mix and the exhaust and that being timed by the movement of its own thing, which through a chain means it's always in the same place. You've got the cams going up and down, they've got fuel in and it compresses and bang and then it opens and then the exhaust pops out. And that is being timed very, very accurately by the uh, valves. So obviously that's the side of the engine that just keeps running on its own. Then you've got that comes out of this is raw power, if you like, um, which is then picked up by the outer basket, held onto some of the inertia, it's held on by the flywheel, and then it transferring to the actual trans um, transmission itself is done through the clutch, and I'll explain how the clutch works. But anyway, as I say, people ask me to do it. Some normal vlogs coming soon, I'll catch you all next time.